with medical treatment. Oh, that's good. Yes. So to the muscle, bones, and the joints. Yes. Interesting enough, I was reading about the history of rheumatology, and they used to think a long time ago that there's a fluid that passes all through the body. What was that? Well, uh, those were the myths, but uh, there's, there's a fluid which passes through the body, the uh -huh. blood and, and, and so forth. And you know blood, most of the, di the diagnosis we make through the blood uh -huh. and the various body fluids. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, that's very interesting. Thank you for that. And on my immediate left, how are you? I'm good. Karibu sana. Asante. Please introduce yourself to our audience and what exactly you serve in. So my name is Dr. Ezekiel Aburu. I'm an orthopedic surgeon. So I, uh, I teach also at the University of Nairobi Department of Orthopedics, mm -hmm. uh, but I also see patients in other clinics. I operate at Kikuyu Hospital, uh, PCA Kikuyu Hospital, mm -hmm. and I also do a private practice. Tell us a little bit about that. You know, many people are watching, they probably need to come into your hands and they have no idea uh, with the title. So uh, orthopedics is the branch of medicine. It's actually the origin of orthopedics is two words, ortho and peds, you mm -hmm. know, so pediatrics is, you know, the, um, the, the, the branch of medicine that deals with children. Mm -hmm. Now, the original word ortho is straightening children. It was, uh, it was first introduced by a French surgeon sometime uh, in the 18th century. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously that has evolved now uh, completely. Uh, it originally it was meant straightening crippled children. Oh. But now that has evolved and now it involves, you know, musculoskeletal diseases, mm -hmm. just like Professor does. Mm -hmm. However, we tend to be more surgical. It doesn't mean that anyone who walks into my clinic will get surgery as much as possible. I try and avoid surgery, mm -hmm. but we tend to be more surgical. So we deal with um, joint pains, uh, we deal with uh, broken bones, uh, we straighten broken bones or fix broken bones. Mm -hmm. uh, we deal with um, uh, various forms of deformities and pain, yes. Wow. So today we're going to be fixing all those broken bones. I know Jesus is a physician. He fixes our hearts and our relationship with him. Today we're going straight into this. And I'll start with you, Dr. Dr. Oyo. Is that the right title? Yes. Yes, sir. Mm. What are some of these causes of joint and muscle pain? You know, there are many conditions that can cause joint pains mm -hmm. and muscle pains. Mm -hmm. But uh, the ones which cause joint pains, we call them arthritis. Okay. And, and, uh, and there are many. There are almost 200 forms of arthritis, but the common ones are about five or six. Mm -hmm. uh, the, if you talk about arthritis, we have rheumatoid arthritis, mm -hmm. which comes because of inflammation of the joints, autoimmune inflammation of the joint, the body fighting itself. Mm -hmm. We have osteoarthritis, which is a degeneration of the cartilages of the joints. Mm -hmm. Then we have gout which is also an inflammatory arthritis, but comes because of high uric acid in the, in the body. Then we have trauma causing uh, jo uh, arthritis. By uh, trauma, do you mean accidents being hit? Injury. Injury. Uh, injury. Okay. Mm -hmm. in, in any form. Mm -hmm. You can fall down. You can mm -hmm. get injured in a, in a game. You can in get injured when you are jogging mm -hmm. uh, and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you, you, you get joint pains. Then we have various autoimmune conditions, the conditions that where the body is fighting itself that re present as, wow. uh, as joint pains. Mm -hmm. Then various, uh, you know, like we have conditions like systemic lupus, mm -hmm. uh, which can also present with the joint pains. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we can have um, other disorders in the body, of the blood disorders, mm -hmm. like sickle cell disease, like uh, leukemia, can also present as joint jo joint pains mm -hmm. and, and various uh, very many other forms, but when you are talking about uh, rheumatology, we also deal with the connective tissues. Okay. We have diseases which go affect the muscles, mm -hmm. and uh, here we there are many you know ranging from just muscle fatigue from over exercises to actually inflammatory muscle diseases, mm -hmm. which can come with muscle pain and muscle weakness. Then. Uh, you can have the disease of the bone itself. The commonest and of interest is uh, what we call osteoporosis, where as you age, especially in women, yes. the bone just becomes brittle mm -hmm. and can uh, even break. Wow. Yes, okay. uh, th those are, are there for diseases uh, of the bone. And then, you know, you have muscles, bone, 
joints and connect it, mm -hmm. connective tissue, the, mm -hmm. the, the tissue that connect these together and put the body together. And you can have disease, diseases that affect those ones. Wow. And those are autoimmune in nature, like lupus is the well, most well known. Mm -hmm. We have scleroderma uh, and, uh, and many, uh, the muscle diseases, uh, and there are many other conditions that affect the, the, the connective tissue. Okay, I'm just curious, just to, so that we get this in check. Both of your professions are very intertwined. When do you refer someone to him and when does he refer someone to you? Good. So, um, yes, uh, both of us deal with musculoskeletal conditions, but uh, many a times we find that we are uh, surgeons and therefore we tend to have uh, surgical solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we, for some conditions, we tend to, to treat both of us, like for example, if you're uh, your mother or your grandmother comes with arthritis of the knee mm -hmm. and uh, it's osteoarthritis of the knee. Uh, we uh, tend to give uh, similar medications so they can be treated by either mm -hmm. a rheumatologist or an orthopedic surgeon. Uh, the difference is that if the arthritis is not responding to treatment, to medical treatment, like if it's arthritis of the knee or arthritis of the hip or even the shoulder, um, the orthopedic surgeon can offer a surgical solution and therefore sometimes rheumatologists will refer to us. On the other hand, uh, there are conditions like he said, autoimmune conditions where the body uh, fails to recognize itself and mm -hmm. thinks it's foreign and starts fighting itself and this also may present with arthritis. But rheumat uh, rheumatoid arthritis and he is the expert professor. Uh, does not just affect joints, it affects the heart, it may affect the eyes, wow. and it may affect other conditions. So as an orthopedic surgeon, I will not treat the eyes, uh, I will not treat the heart, I will not treat something else. But with regards to the joint, a uh, professor may refer the patient to me to get a joint replacement, mm -hmm. you know, or to fuse a specific joint. Mm -hmm. Now, um, so I will do that part and get the patient relief. but. The patient is not just getting painkillers, they are specific medications that will be prescribed by the rheumatologist in order to put the patient in remission of the, rheumato of the rheumatoid arthritis itself. Mm -hmm. So that's where both of us, okay. uh, yes. That's where it meets. As a child, I had an incident on a slide where we were sliding a couple of kids and my hand remained, you know, like just behind me and these kids came and slid all over my hands and my hands were like swollen and when I went to the doctor he said I have arthritis. <laughs> was that like really, just, this is just for myself? Is that arthritis yeah. or? <laughs> yeah. So are... um, I, maybe I'll, 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 I'll answer a question by uh, giving you a, a, a story where a patient came to me and he had a, she had a certain condition and I told her, I think this is your condition and uh, they went and they saw somebody else and somebody else gave them another story which never worked. So when they came back to me, I asked the patient, why did you not Good. come back? Uh -huh. And the patient said, my doctor was going. <laughs> so I think all of those friends of yours uh, who uh, had been to some medical school which you have no idea about and they were experts. So it's good to go to the proper doctor. Uh, it takes a lot of years to train a doctor. It takes about five, six, seven years to train <laughs> an orthopedic surgeon, okay. uh, somebody cannot be one by googling for about two minutes. Question would be this, when to see a doctor, when you're experiencing pain uh, in your body, when does one say, you know what, this pain is, I need to go, I need to, I need to see a physician about this. I told you, uh, I indicated that they are over forms of arthritis. Yes. And immediately you feel any pain mm -hmm. of the joints, mm -hmm. you should go and see a doctor. Immediately you feel any pain of the joints. You should go and see a doctor. Okay. So that this pain is characterized as, as to the cause okay. and as to the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So that you can get appropriate treatment. Okay. Any pain neglected can get out of control and cause a lot of problems. And that's a really good indicator for us. When we have complaints at home, someone is feeling this certain pain, just immediately go. It might be something serious that you could solve by seeing a physician in good time. Very, very good. What are the signs and symptoms associated with joint pain? Well, um, it, uh, well there, there are many. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things is just pain mm -hmm. and uh, 
and the pain, we tend to get pain from um, a one where the patient says the pain is not too bad to attend, um, where the patient, the pain is quite severe. And then there is also uh, loss of function. So one of the things that we do uh, as orthopedic surgeons when you come to us is we tend to assess your activities of daily living. So, and, and sometimes the patient does not realize they've lost this function. Mm -hmm. So when a patient comes with arthritis of the hip, we say, okay, how bad is your pain? Uh, and then we also we ask them, how far can you walk? Uh, are you able to go up and down the stairs? Uh, are you able to use the bathroom? Are you able to sit in the bath? And many a times the patient tells us that, wow, coming to think about it, oh, I, actually, I can't even do that. Mm. Um, in Africa, the killer is usually, are you able to go to church? And, uh, <laughs> by that time... Um, by that time, things the, are serious. Things are very serious, That's especially for the, for the mothers. They're, they're ready for surgery. <laughs> uh, before then, maybe not. Uh, but then also, there is, it depends on the joint. So, like, for example, if it's your shoulder that's aching, you know, one of the things that we'll ask the patient is, are you able to sleep on that side at night? Mm -hmm. Are you able to raise your hand and reach to the cupboard mm -hmm. yeah are you able to comb your hair with that so it really depends you know if it's the hands would ask how are things are you able to tie your buttons you understand so we tend to look at activities of daily living and then there are other things which are like swelling and all that you know so they, they, they could be a myriad of of, of issues um, that that's why professor said you go see the doctor mm. Yeah, because, you, you, you know, you, I often joke that in this country there are two diseases. There is malaria and typhoid. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you don't have one, you have the other. If you don't have the other one, you have the one. So, but, you know, it takes years and years to train a doctor, mm. you know. And, um, and so, uh, but the doctor cannot tell you in two minutes how much training. So it's important. You mm. know, many times we diagnose things and patients are shocked. Yeah. They say they've never had that. Yeah, well, of course you've never had it because, I mean, if you ask me about law and what, you know, what all these laws that have been made over the years, I have got no clue mm -hmm. because I've not spent my time reading. But mm -hmm. if you ask me about orthopedics, uh, I will be able to tell you conditions which you, you will never heard of, you'll never hear about. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Wondering for you, Dr. Tari, with uh, people who come with also the same symptoms but more in your field. What are some of the questions you ask them? What are some of the uh, things that you trace to find out what is really going on with your patient? We ask more or less the same things, mm -hmm. but we assess for joint swellings. Mm -hmm. And you know the joint swellings, you want to know which joints mm -hmm. are, are involved. For example, if you're talking about rheumatoid arthritis, if it affects the joints in a symmetrical manner, if the right hand is involved, the left hand will be involved. Mm -hmm. And usually there are particular mm -hmm. kind, kinds of joints. And are you able to make a fist in the morning? How long does it take for you to have stiffness mm -hmm. in the morning? So mm -hmm. uh, it is the, the duration of morning stiffness, the swelling of the joints, the pain of the joints, and which joints, how many joints. Mm -hmm. For example, if you're talking about gout, it can come only in the big toe or in the knee and the same joint uh, uh, and it's just one joint very excruciating pain. Mm -hmm. Next time when it comes, it can come on a different joint but just one. Mm. Uh, and for example, if you're dealing with infections due to bacterial infections, you start with one joint and it keeps on recruiting other joints. Mm -hmm. But wow. the, the, the joint that started mm -hmm. does not stop. If you're dealing, for example, with rheumatic fever, it, it, it migrates. When one joint, it starts on one joint, when it goes to another joint, the one which started recovers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that pattern helps us to know which joint is involved. Okay. And, and if we're dealing, for example, with osteoarthritis, you, you, uh, it is just one joint. Uh, it's, it's, it doesn't come, it doesn't affect many joints. It mm -hmm. can start one joint, but sometimes it can affect many joints. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the pattern, you know, the stiffness is not, does not take long. If you have stiffness of the finger, it does not last for one hour. Mm -hmm. and, and, and those are some of the questions. If you have arthritis due to lupus, you will have a, addition to, in addition to joints, you'll have skin problems, mm -hmm. your hair will fall off, mm -hmm. you might have fever mm -hmm. uh, and other, other symptoms. So mm -hmm. those things help us. But in addition, we determine uh, are you able 
to carry out your activities of daily living, just mm -hmm. like orthopedics. Because the idea is, when you are treating the patient, you want to stop the pain, and you want them to go back to the activities yeah. that they used to do. Mm -hmm. You want them to, to restore them to normalcy. Wow. And if you are, they are unable to, you use an occupational therapy to, to give them a new normal. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I hear the slight difference is you look more for patterns. Which joint, which leg, which, how are they behaving? And those are some of the questions that you'll be asking those other questions. But right now, so diagnosis. I have come, shown up. What are, uh, what are some of the diagnoses you, you give? When uh, what do you mean by what are some of the diagnoses? Some of the conditions? Between? Yes. Okay, so if you look at orthopedics, orthopedics is a very wide um, speciality mm. in medicine. Uh, we, and uh, the way to look at it is that it's divided into different branches. So in orthopedics, we have subspecialities. Uh, in orthopedics, we have uh, people who are spine surgeons. Mm -hmm. So they tend to deal with spine problems, arthritis of the spine, degenerative disease of the spine, scoliosis where you have a curved back, mm -hmm. a child that, or people with a hunchback. That's uh, the spine. Then we have pediatric orthopedics. Uh, these tend to deal with a big part of orthopedics, you know, is broken bones, so yes. fractures. So mm -hmm. We deal with that all the time. Uh, that forms quite a big chunk of our work. However, they will deal with children who are born with hip problems, mm -hmm. the children who are born with knee problems, the children who are born with problems with foot and everything. Then we have uh, hand surgeons, okay, and hand surgeons will deal with uh, problems of the hand, carpal tunnel, trigger finger, tendon problems, uh, paralysis of the hand. And we have shoulder surgeons. They will deal with problems with pain in the shoulder. We call it impingement. Then uh, we have uh, hip and knee surgeons. Uh, and they will do hip replacements and knee replacements. And then we have uh, foot surgeons. They will deal with flat feet and high act feet and plantar fasciitis, Achilles problems. But by and large, most orthopedic surgeons, myself included, we tend to deal with, uh, with, with most things. We tend to, I personally deal with everything except the spine. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so we tend to do that, but we have areas where we, we, you know, we, we probably um, have spent more time dealing with, uh, I would say like for example myself, about 80% of my practice is general orthopedics, hip and knee replacement and all those things, but 20% of my practice is foot and ankle surgery. Mm -hmm. So I deal with quite a number of complex foot problems. Okay, for you, let's just ask like the most common one, arthritis, we, that one is thrown left, right and center. <laughs> How do you diagnose for arthritis? You know, you know arthritis is it's a generic term. Mm -hmm. It just means that there's a problem with the joint. Okay. There's pain and swelling on the joint. Okay. So when you come with pain and swelling on the joint, we want to decide out of these common forms of arthritis, which one do you have? Mm -hmm. And therefore, the pattern that I describe will, is part, taking history is part of, uh, helps us in 70% of the times mm -hmm. to make diagnosis. And once you have an idea that this is real likely mm -hmm. to be this, then you make, you do certain tests. You know, for example, if we take, for example, rheumatoid arthritis, it it's usually affects uh, young people in, in their 30s, 40s, mm -hmm. and it comes uh, painful, swollen joints in a symmetrical manner and with stiffness of, of, the, of the fingers mm -hmm. in the morning, lasting more than one hour. And what you do, you, you check for markers of inflammation. Uh, uh, that blood tests we do for markers of inflammation and they usually increased. And uh, then you do confirmatory tests with uh, in the blood, mm -hmm. rheumatoid factor, mm -hmm. uh, and, and then you, you are able to make a diagnosis. But having said that, there are some patients with rheumatoid arthritis where the, the test, rheumatoid factor could be negative. There's a confirm, another test we call anti-CCP. But even that one could be negative. So the most important thing is what the patient tells you. You must okay. talk with the patient and touch the joints. Mm -hmm. The second thing, something like gout, somebody comes based on his age, habitats, and, and habits, you, you are able to determine that this one, most, most probably, mo most commonly men above 40 years, 50s, mm -hmm. uh, but now, because of changing of diet and changing of lifestyle, mm -hmm. the age is coming down. We are seeing people even in their 20s with the gout. Wow. So you, you, you know that this, this joint, based on the, the lifestyle, mm -hmm. this is likely to be gout. Then you determine by doing a test for high uric, for uric acid, mm. which is often 
increased. And if the joint is inflamed with, with fluid inside, you aspirate that fluid and take it to the laboratory. And that helps you to make diagnosis. But when you're talking about osteoarthritis, when you touch the joint, it, it makes some noise, it grids. Mm -hmm. And the markers of inflammation are usually normal. And, and uh, there's a particular pattern also on uh, the x-ray that mm -hmm. will tell you that this is uh, osteoarthritis. Mm -hmm. But by and large, all forms of arthritis, if left un unattended to, will end up with osteoarthritis. Mm. Any joint problem will get degeneration and, and get into, uh, become osteoarthritic. Mm -hmm. Osteoarthritis is just the end, the, the, the end of, of, of the game. And, and uh, it means that the joint is failing. You know, even the way heart fails, yes. the joint can also fail. Wow. And it doesn't do its work of, of movement mm -hmm. with ease and without pain. Yeah. So we, we use those, the various blood tests and clinical, clinical uh, clinical impression that you get from the patient as you talk to the patient to, to put piece to put the pieces together and arrive at a diagnosis. Okay, mm -hmm. we've spoken about lupus as one of the common diseases that affects the joint. But what other common diseases affects the joints? Maybe we can start with you. And this is a question for both of you. Yes. Yeah. So you can just alternately answer. Maybe. We've talked about rheumatoid arthritis mm -hmm. uh, affects about three percent of the population. Okay. We have uh, osteoarthritis, which is fairly the commonest, the commonest problem. And you know, if you are talking about, it is, it is one of the things that will happen to you mm -hmm. if you stay in this world for a long time. It reaches a stage, uh, like when you are uh, 70, over, over 50, 50, 50 years. If you do uh, uh, 50, 60, 70 years, if you do an x-ray, virtually everybody at, at that age will have some form of osteoarthritis. Mm. It's an aging sort of a process, but it can come early if you had an infection earlier, or if you had injury, or if you had another form of arthritis uh, at a younger age. Mm -hmm. So uh, osteoarthritis. Then gout. Gout is, is, is a common and is the most rapidly growing joint problem in the world, even in this country, mm -hmm. mainly because of the habits uh, and, and, and sedentary lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But of course, there are infections that uh, for the joint that affect children. When uh, affect children, affect bacterial infection. Even if, when you hear about things like TB, mm -hmm. they also affect the joints. Wow. Yeah, but the, the, one of the other issue, major, ma the biggest problems in musculoskeletal uh, medicine is back pain. Back pain is, is, is a leading cause of uh, absenteeism from work mm -hmm. and a leading cause of early retirement. In, the, in fact, the top most cause, cause wow. of early retirement mm -hmm. worldwide. Okay. Yes. When we come to you, you said that you try your best to avoid going uh, into surgery. What are some of the other treatments you give for joint and muscle? So it really depends on the disease mm -hmm. uh, that you're dealing with. Like I said, there are a myriad of diseases. We don't even know where to start. Mm -hmm and uh, all of them would have different forms of treatment. Uh, for example, if you uh, have the hand, um, one of the conditions that affects the hand is a condition known as carpal tunnel. Um, with that, sometimes surgery is difficult to, to avoid, you know, once uh, because it progresses, but you can give the patient a brace. Okay. Can yeah. you explain that to in complete layman's language? So carpal tunnel is a condition uh, where you have the a tunnel is you know like the tunnel of a tree, yes. and then the carpus is the wrist. It's a medical way of saying the wrist. Mm -hmm. So there is a tunnel just at the 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 region of the wrist which extends over here. Mm -hmm. It's a fibrous tunnel because there's some fibrous tissue over here, and then there are many tunnels that are all coming into your hand. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the space in that tunnel gets narrow and, uh, and the nerve gets compressed. Mm -hmm. So patients have pain and tingling when they wake up in the night and they have to shake their hands and everything. And they come to you and you tell them that, uh, they say, I don't know what's wrong with my hand. And sometimes it can be so bad that the patient, things start falling from their hands. Mm. That's quite advanced. Mm. And what we do is we sometimes we may give them just a brace. Rarely they would give an injection. Uh, and then after that, the surgery will, will decompress and give you complete relief. Now, but we try and avoid, you know, if a patient comes with another condition, a trigger finger, you know, where they feel their finger jams and then it triggers. Yeah. Sometimes what we do is we just give an injection in the sheath of the tendon and that resolves the problem. 
so it really varies. A lot of women have shoulder pain and they have pain in the shoulder in the night. Mm -hmm. They can't sleep on that side. And sometimes what we do is we give an injection and also we send them for physiotherapy mm -hmm. and that sorts out the problem. What causes it? The handbag, heavy handbags? No, it's not really the heavy handbags. Uh -huh. uh, what causes it is something known as impingement syndrome. Mm -hmm. So the way your shoulder is structured, uh, what happens is that there is a bone which catches on, uh, on some tendons over there. Wow. And that can be quite painful. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the reason why uh, they can't raise their hand mm -hmm. up at night. So, no, they can't raise their hand to reach the cupboard or something. Yeah. So um, we, we give them an injection and sometimes that alleviates a problem. We send them for physio. Uh, but you could also have other conditions of the, the shoulder, like a frozen shoulder, where the shoulder is not moving. The shoulder joint is so inflamed and so tight. Mm -hmm. So what I would suggest is if you have a pain, like a professor said, is you go and you see the doctor. Because yes. you go to the pharmacy, and the pharmacies, um, some of them are okay, you know. Some people, to be honest, even who man these pharmacies have got no training whatsoever. They are basically just shopkeepers who have been instructed to give people anti-malarials and, and, uh, and what is it called, antibiotics. And you say you've got pain in your shoulder. This man has never had of impingement. He's never had of frozen shoulder. You will say that is malaria. And they will give you something for malaria and some painkillers and hope you get better. And so we tend to see these patients when they have really gone around and around and around. And we say, what you have is, is impingement of the shoulder. And they say, what's that? And they say, they've never been told. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just see the doctor. Wow. With me in studio is Dr. Ezekiel Oburu, consultant orthopedic surgeon, and Dr. Omondio, your consultant physician and rheumatologist. This is one of those uh, careers where we really have to take seriously be before things get really worse in our bodies. You can text in any questions you have. Maybe there's some of the things that they've mentioned that are trigger in your mind that you've been through that or maybe you're going through it right now triple two three two is how to do that but also where can we find you you mentioned that you practice yeah so i my clinic is at uh, 40 suits mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, a group practice of orthopedics uh, nairobi spine and uh, orthopedic center so um i'm one of the That's surgeons in West there. Lens, yeah. no no actually it is in 40 suits just over here there's a okay. 40s in upper here Okay. Opposite Nairobi Club in between Kenyatta Hospital I and, see it. Okay. and Traffic Police. Okay. It's a new building, yes. Good. Okay. But there is a 40 stars here. In there West is West. one oh, in West okay. Africa, that's <laughs> I'm like, one. where do I live? Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh -huh. And where can we find you, sir? Oh, we are neighbors. Oh. I'm, I'm in first floor for uh -huh. two suits. Uh, okay. Nairobi Athletics. But we run a clinic on Thursday afternoons at the Kenyatta National Hospital. Wow. And I also do a clinic at... Uh, Mata Hospital mm -hmm. on Wednesday mornings, mm -hmm. but when uh, things uh, when there's no lockdown, I have a clinic once a month mm -hmm. at the Rakan Hospital wow. in Kisumu, okay, and another clinic at the Mombasa Hospital in Mombasa, Old Town. So you do all those flights? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Okay, Asante Sana. Yeah, but uh, the main clinic is at uh, Forty Suits uh -huh. and at the Kenyatta National Hospital where we serve the people of Kenya. That's amazing. Yes. So you can call in right after. When, when we're back after the break, you can go ahead and call in, ask all the questions you might have. Take every single pain seriously because there are so many conditions they've mentioned that I can't even say due to the side of Uhuru Highway I come from. But take it very seriously. We'll be right back right here on Health Check on Hope FM where you, a Hope TV, where you look and live. Thank you. <laughs> Since late last year, the coronavirus COVID-19 has emerged as a serious healthcare threat. This is an infection that has gone global and no one has been spared. The government, through the Ministry of Health, has put in measures to keep Kenyans safe against COVID-19, which is currently rampant around the world, with new confirmed infections and death cases daily. Such sanitization and screening of visitors at this border post and across every entry point in the country is very vital in preventing the spread of the disease in the country. I'm very happy about the screenings that are going on in Tanzania and Kenya. I think it's very proactive that you're thinking about 
stopping it at the border so that it, that it does not spread. It is scary that a single cough here can lead to an outbreak of epic proportions. In order to prevent that, the government has instituted measures to keep Kenyans safe. The facility has all the equipment you need from uh, handling a basic patient up to ICU setting. However, you also have a role to play in preventing spread of infections. Citizen responsibility is the key to the success of this initiative and these measures. Let's all do what we have to do individually. And this is how we are going to defeat this disease. It's just our general hygiene, okay? And that now means at workplaces, we should ensure that our work surfaces are clean. Well, let's ensure that we have proper sanitation in Mikono. Every time we have matatu, we have to sanitize Mikono. We have faced many severe challenges as a nation, and we have always found a way to rise above them. COVID-19 is no different and will overcome the pandemic. Stop coronavirus. Follow all directives from the Ministry of Health. Wash your hands properly. What comes to your mind when you think of the perfect home for your family? Is it the beauty, the comfort, the security, the convenience, or even the affordability. Victory Gardens offers exactly that and much more. It is just 10 minutes drive from Kitengela town and 3.8 kilometers off the tarmac. This gated community project comes with solar street lighting, maram roads, beautiful trees, 24 hour security, and water connected to every plot. The best part is families are already living here. Call us today on 0702-831083 or visit www.optiven.co.ke. Yes, I have come to testify. I will stand up before the congregation and testify of the wonderful things you have done. I was on my knees. And that day, that is one thing that amazed me. For sure, God never lies. Thank God, because it's only God's blessings that are added no sorrow. Mimi, no On Testify, we bring to you real encounters with Christ, breathtaking experiences, and life-transforming testimonies. We testify. Nikamwabia mungu, kubuka nimekuwa katika jia zako. Kama kuna wakati, wakuniokoa, ni huu. Niheri ni uwawe, nizikwe na hawa kijezaliwa na wawo. Awe na jua waluya. My husband did everything for me. For four years, I used to cry and pray to God because... Pauru kiwa na mungu. Join me this and every Thursday at 8 p.m. on the program where our faith in Christ keeps growing. Right here at Hope TV where you look and live. Life is not the same again. And welcome back. Thank you so much for all the feedback that's coming in on our Facebook, on our text line, and also the calls that are already coming in now that we've opened the call line. If you just joined us today, we're talking about orthopedics and rheumatology, two very, very interesting studies that affect so many parts of our bodies, including the joints. We're talking about the muscles. We're talking about what else? I've said it all. The bones. The joints, bones. the muscles, and the bones. And connective tissue. And the connective, that's the one I was looking for. Yeah. And connective tissues, every single part of you. And what Dr. Oyo, who has joined us right here, emphasizes is if you have any form of pain, don't ignore it. Be sure to visit either one. With me, right next to me, is Dr. Ezekiel Oburu, consultant orthopedic surgeon. And some of the things that you deal with are surgery and being able to connect back and make me function again. Could you just share with us uh, some of the work that you have done uh, over the time? 
All right, thank you very much. So, uh, like I just said, this is probably just going to be a snippet of what, what we deal with, because mm -hmm. we deal with so many different conditions. But uh, I, could, I could share with you. Sure. Um, Our team is going to help us right now, just for you to get a feel of what... Okay, fine. Can we just pick up a call and then come back to the video as no we problem. get it for you? Thank you so much. Who are we talking to? <coughs> Hello, good Hello. evening. Hello. Hello, good evening. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Fine, thank you. What's your name and where are you calling us from? My name is Ogut. I'm calling from Kayole. Yes, sir. I have a question. Nataka uh, Dr. Excuse me, please. <laughs> there is this pain. When I wake up uh, in the morning, uh -huh. On my left leg, it's a pain. 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 It's a do you have any question to ask him or is that enough information to respond? That, uh, that sounds question. like enough for me. Okay, thank but you so much. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I have another question. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay, I have a surgery. I have a surgery. I have a surgery. I have a surgery. I Okay, did you get that? Mm. Yeah, I'll, I'll answer both. Okay, Asante Sana, we'll yeah. be responding sure. to you. Thank you for calling. So the first diagnosis, and you know, it's always good to see a doctor, like Professor said, mm -hmm. because there are many causes of heel pain. Um, uh, but if um, the most common is called plantar fasciitis. It's very characteristic. Patients usually say they feel pain when they wake up in the morning. And then after taking a few steps, the first steps can be very painful. But after taking a few steps, it eases. Then they also say when they sit down, when they rise from a sitting position, it's a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. But then when they take a few steps, it eases. So that's a condition known as plantar fasciitis. And it is due to inflammation of a fibrous tissue at the bottom of your foot. foot we call it the plantar fascia at its origin. The reason you feel more of this pain in the morning is because when you're sleeping in the night, your foot, well, you can't see yourself when you're sleeping, mm -hmm. but your foot is in a relaxed position. Mm. So when you wake up, you stretch it, mm -hmm. and that's why you tend to feel uh, the pain. Now, um, the primary, usually it's not a cause of concern. Uh, the primary treatment is stretching. We, we tell the patient to stretch, 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 stretch. In fact, what I do when I see patients in the clinic with plantar fasciitis, I tell them, look here, uh, go to your phone, go to write plantar fasciitis stretches, go to Google, go to uh, Google Images, go to YouTube, go to Pinterest, go to everything and just stretch like crazy. Mm -hmm. That's the main treatment. Weight loss may help. The right shoe may, may help. Sometimes I give the patient an ice cream very, very rarely I inject the patient. And that's important because many a times patients come to you, they've seen a general doctor, and a doctor has injected twice, thrice, four, five, six, seven, eight times, which is tragic because what happens sometimes, if you inject too many times, mm -hmm. what happens is the fat pad in your heel can atrophy. If it atrophies, there's no treatment for that. Mm. So you'll feel like you're truly working on pebbles. Mm -hmm. Now, to answer the second question, this is a very common question that we get. Do I remove the implant or do I not remove the implant? Mm -hmm. I think part of it is generational. In the olden days, the old orthopedic surgeons used to remove most implants. And I still think that some, maybe some may still do. But uh, the standard practice in most places in the world is not to remove implants. Mm -hmm. If a patient's implant is really, really, really bothering them, I will remove. Okay. Now, but there's some implants which we remove, but not many. If it's really bothering them, I will remove. You know, if the patient says, I want this out, I will remove it. But 
if you go to countries where they do all these operations, really, to be honest, if they spend time removing implants, that's what they'll do for the rest of their lives. Absolutely. Yeah, and okay. usually there is no, usually there is no harm. Mm. The implants are, are safe and they can stay with them forever. Okay. I think the team is saying we are ready with the presentation. Thank you so much. Let's now take us through uh, the presentation of what exactly you do. As Dr. Oyo prepares to tell us, what are these habits that we need to stop so that we do not go through any more joint pains and muscle pains and what lifestyle adjustments we need to make right after this? All right, so thank you very much. Um, I'll wait for the slides to, to come up. up. Okay, yes. let's have the slides up now. So good. Uh, so that's moved uh, to mm -hmm. the second slide. Uh -huh. But uh, so this is uh, this is uh, us operating. Um, uh, actually, this is a hospital in Meru, uh -huh. uh, and this patient had pain in the in the what is it called in in the shoulder, mm -hmm. and um, uh, it was a lot of pain. The patient could uh, not sleep at night, could not raise the hand. Uh, when I examined, there was a lot of pain. She was in her late forties and they had really gone around and had not gotten a solution. So the procedure that I did, or the, the procedure that I did here is uh, called shoulder arthroscopy, mm -hmm. where you go in and you do keyhole surgery, you can see that. We can see we are watching a TV. Okay. You know, uh, we are operating just uh, with some tools. Uh -huh. And um, so uh, you, you do that and you increase the space so that that bone does not catch on the, on the tendons. Yeah. And uh, the patient, after a while, sent me uh, a text, you know, uh, uh, replying, you know, saying, thank you very much for your service. My, my wife was, was quite unwell, but now is quite, uh, is feeling much better. Yeah. So if you scroll back to the first slide, which I think you had missed. Um, Can you go back to the first slide? Yeah. Just to give a hint of what exactly was the issue. So, no, th well, that's the next slide. Okay, that's the next slide. But can you just go That's to fine. I'll, okay, I'll, let's I'll just, proceed to let's that. Do this That's all right. That's fine. So this is this is a young man. He was um, he had arthritis of his hip. Uh, you can see uh, it probably something that happened to him when he was a teenager. Mm. There are various conditions that can afflict teenagers. I think this must have been a condition known as Pathes disease uh, that affected his hip. And he was walking with this. He he could hardly walk at all. And um, can they? Can you project the slide, please? Um, Let's just have that one, and then as we just see as an example, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, so he could hardly walk at all. And then, can we go to the next slide? Next slide, please. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, we. Uh, so I did a hip replacement on him. You know. Uh, okay. We rarely do hip replacements in people this age. Uh, but uh, he was hardly function. And he was under 30? Uh, he was under 30. Usually wow. hip replacements is something that we do in patients who are over the age of 60. Uh -huh. But in this case, he could hardly function. Wow. He couldn't get a job. He couldn't, it was, life was miserable. And so, so we did now it, now he's back. He's, wow. he's able to, hip replacement is one of the best operations in the world. It is actually second only to cataract surgery with regards to patient satisfaction. And that's interesting. That's exactly what we talked about last week. Yes. We actually had an ophthalmologist and an optometrist in studio. If you missed that episode, you can check it out on YouTube. It is there. That's just some of the examples uh, of the kind of work that you do. There's so much more. We can't go through every single thing, mm -hmm. but he sent such great information. Let's pick up on Emmanuel as we come back to Dr. Yo. Emmanuel, good evening. Good evening. Thank you so much for calling Health Check. What's your question? Oh, my question is, I had a painful cone on, under, underneath my foot. So uh, I've used some, uh, some cone remover, but the cone keeps on coming back. Should, should I see a dermatologist or should I come to the orthopedic surgeon? That's, okay. that's a good question. <laughs> that's a very good question. Yeah, I think either. You know, let me say this, that uh, I was talking to a dermatologist uh, colleague and I was saying, we're talking about cones, and mm -hmm. you're saying that there's some cones which will need a certain kind of treatment that the dermatologist can give. Okay. However, there are some cones which are, as a result, 
like one patient that I saw this week who had a corner, she said, I've had this from the time I was a child, and I did an x-ray, and I was able to show the patient that, the, that if you remove your corn, it will recur unless you remove this bony protuberance. But there are other th reasons you can get a corn. You can get a bunion where you, one toe is, is deviating mm -hmm. outward and mm -hmm. looking, and then you get what you think is a corn. We call it a bunion on the inner aspect of your big toe. And, and, and that cannot just be done by going and shaving the bone. Mm -hmm. That's a totally different problem. You need to do an operation where you correct the deformity. Okay. Yes. Okay. We, Thank you so much. We'll be coming to all your texts on triple two three two. Keep calling us. But Dr. Ari, can we now go to the adjustments we need to make in our lives uh, to be able to either avoid completely or reduce our chances of getting joint and muscle Muscle eggs. Yes. Yes. Thank you. It's, it's, um, there's no uh, single formula mm -hmm. that can be used for all forms of arthritis because you know some of them are uh, the body recognizes uh, itself as foreign and starts fighting it. Mm -hmm. But I can give uh, uh, some general principles. Yes, sir. One of the first, uh, most important things uh, that uh, you can uh, that can help in prevention of bone and joint issues is um, weight loss. Mm -hmm. uh, if, for example, knee joint osteoarthritis, if you lose weight by 10%, you decrease the, chance, the, weight, the pain by over 50%. Mm -hmm. In fact, if there's an invention that you can get in this world and put in a capsule and it will be a bigger invention, is, is something, if you can put exercise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I appeal. Put, yes. <laughs> because appeal, uh, weight loss, is, is, is uh, you are fighting many diseases. That's true. It helps you with diabetes. It helps with hypertension. Mm -hmm. It helps with osteoarthritis. Mm -hmm. And it also helps with certain forms of cancer. Mm -hmm. So weight, a proper weight, overweight is a big problem mm -hmm. that needs to be dealt with. Then the other issue is prevention of trauma, falls, and injury. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, in, in this country, we take for granted the holes that are just everywhere, potholes, uh, uh, manholes which are not covered mm -hmm. and so forth. And these are major causes of fractures, injury, and, and falls. Mm -hmm. And you know, for example, if an old woman falls down and fractures the hip, mm -hmm. the chances of dying from that woman is just as high or even higher than somebody who has got breast cancer. Mm. Because once you have fracture of the neck of femur, although it is one of the nice operations I talked about, mm -hmm. but an old person with many other conditions, is diabetic, is hypertensive, is, is, is chances of getting blood clot is very high, mm. is, is one of those things that need to be prevention of falls and injury. Dr. Oyo, before you go to your next point, there's a lady called Halima. She's calling, she's saying she has a question specifically for you. Mm -hmm. Can we just pick it up and then you continue? Don't lose your train of thought. Halima? Yes. Good evening. Thank you for calling Health Check. Okay, good evening. Go ahead with your question. Okay, first of all, eh. me mgongo uni umatana. Mm -hmm. Especially, ni kilala, ni kiamuka. Mm -hmm. Niliambiwa ni maso zinikapewa, hizo dawa za maso zinikameza. Lakini bado wani uma, sije kaa ni uze. Mm -hmm. mm. Do you have a question, a follow-up question for her maybe that could help you respond better? Ukuna miaka minga api ya lima? I'm 58. 58. Eh. Umiwai kuumia? Kuumia vipi? Ku, ulipata jali ya uviriko meza. Ah, sasa hajali sijui lakini maybe kubeba vitu ama, but pia uwa nasimama sana sa zingini. Uwa nasimama sana. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, Ayas. Manake kazi yangu ni ya kusimama. Oh, okay. Kazi yangu ni kusimama. Waka, so, wakati ali, wakati alipigiwa picha, uh -huh. mpaka wakati alimbiwa kuna maso pitis, was he done in investigation? Halima? Yes? Ulifanyua investigation yote ama uliambua tuyo ni maso le kukapewa dao kaenda zako? Ah, uh, okay. Zamani sana ni ipigiwa picha ni kambiwa hakuna kitu hapo. Aha. Ni kambiwa ni maso zina ni katiwa dao za maso. Oh, okay. Sawa. Uh, I think the, the, the issue of back pain, I told you, is one of the commonest That's issues true. that people face in life. Uh -huh. And there are many causes of back pain. Mm -hmm. If you take the back itself, it can either be mechanical or inflammatory. Mechanical that the structure, the various structures in the mm -hmm. back are involved. Mm -hmm. But you can also have another systemic problem, 
that presents as a back pain. Yeah. You can even have a problem, a gynecological problem coming right. as back pain mm -hmm. or a problem in the intestines or in the abdomen. Presenting the deal back. Okay. So what she needs is to be seen and be evaluated properly mm -hmm. for the back pain mm -hmm. so that the actual cause of the back pain mm -hmm. can be identified and then it is dealt with. But, but you know, for example, maybe she was done x-rays and told the muscles are tight. Yeah. But x-rays only sh shows the bones. Yeah. But she may need, for example, MRI. She might need a blood test to check is it inflammatory or is it mechanical. So what she needs is to be, you know, I say that mm -hmm. if you have any pain anywhere in the body, see a doctor. Yes. And see the right doctor. Okay. Yeah. So okay. that you have done proper evaluation, the problem is identified and dealt yeah. with. 58 is most probably is a, is a, is a, a age for mechanical okay. back pain. But if it's a new onset back pain, even at that age, mm. and it's very severe, even some forms of cancer start like that. Yes. Some women of that age, if she had early menopause, can be having osteoporosis okay. and having microfracture of the of the bones. Okay. So she needs to be seen and be evaluated so mm -hmm. that she can be advised. Yes. Yes. Before we proceed, Simon. Simon Intika. Yes. Uh, how are you? Fine, Very thank you, sir. How are you? Very fine. I have a question for the doctor, please. Please go on. Uh, I've been training for, I've been waiting now for the morning uh, exercise. Uh -huh. And uh, for, that is for the last one month. Mm -hmm. And from last Friday, I began having prob uh, a pain on my light hip. Mm -hmm. I'm 36 years. 36 years, okay. Somebody, a doctor has told me to take some uh, calcium supplements. What would be the doctor's advice on that? Because uh, I've never had any accident, can be. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Any question for you? Um, so the pain is, when is the pain? Do you get the pain when you're just doing the exercise or? It started on last Friday, having paid pain for one month. Okay. And is the pain there all the time or just some of the time? When I'm walking. But when I'm jogging, there's no pain. But when I'm walking, I develop a kind of a pain on my right, right leg. Is it, does it go, is it, because you said it's your hip, is it in your leg or in your hip? It's on the, on the, on the hip, where the leg joins with the hip. Okay. Okay. That's good. So, can, uh, can we pause, just keep the question, so that we finish the thought that he had, and we are holding the calls right now, please, so that we can answer the question and finish the thought you had, and as he's finishing this, one is asking, karaoke is asking, I was operated on C6 and C7 in 2014, since then my right wrist cannot button. And my leg is lazy. What do I do? So you'll answer those two okay. after back. I think that's really, I've seen C6 and C7. I just saw you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's just uh, wrap up what exactly you were talking about. We are talking about a trauma. Yes. And, and prevention of accident, mm -hmm. prevention of falls. Yes, sir. And, and, and this is one of the things, that the, the environment needs to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. You know, even the walkways on the roads need to be proper and to be safe. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can be okay. Uh, like, for example, my aunt was running next to Nyayo Stadium. Mm -hmm. She put, she, she fell into a manhole, which was left open. She got a fracture, and that alone has uh, disabled her. She got a compound fracture, you'll tell you about it, and, and admitted in Kenyatta Hospital for months, and it has never really healed, healed. healed properly because of negligence of the, of the of the, those who are supposed to deal with yes. th those kind of situations. Yes. Uh, and the, the third thing that we need to prevent is ignoring pain. It's one of the, ignoring joint pain is one of the things that we should not do mm -hmm. because we, it can help us to, to, to prevent what can be a big problem. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, uh, you, you, you can ignore gout. Gout may just be a joint thing and you keep on taking pain medicine. But gout can affect even the kidneys, mm -hmm. can affect the heart, and, and, and can lead to early uh, uh, premature uh, heart attack. Yes. And, and so the joint pain, don't ignore it, deal with it. Then we're talking about gout. Uh, mm -hmm. Issues like diet and consumption of alcohol. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you consume, it's not just red meat. But excessive consumption of anything mm -hmm. uh, is, is not a good thing because da gout is related to diabetes, obesity, and hypertension. Mm -hmm. And all those things can be sorted out if you maintain a proper 
weight. So diet, is you should be very careful. You know, one of the biggest decisions you make in your life is the decision you make. A decision when you open your mouth to eat yes you are making an important decision concerning the quality of life and how long you are going to stay in this world because what might kill you may be based on what you take on your dining table so when you have gout don't think that just gout alone you are dealing with hypertension diabetes and maybe heart attack mm. and a lot of cholesterol in your system so diet is one of the things that we need to pay attention to then the, the other thing is cigarette smoking Yes. Cigarette smoking is, uh, uh, is considered to be one of the causative factors or associated with rheumatoid arthritis wow. and also uh, osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. But we all know very well other things that we know about cigarette smoking, lung cancer, sphagnol cancer, yeah. uh, and so forth, premature death. And lastly, uh, I'll talk about footwear. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in this country, one of the biggest businesses in this country is selling of second-hand shoes. Mm -hmm. But even shoes have what their expiry date. That's true. What you wear can be a cause of food issues, food That's problems. That's true. Probably that guy who called from Kayoli mm -hmm. is a specialist in buying second-hand mm -hmm. food causing plantar fasciitis. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even shoes are supposed to have a certain contour. That's true. And, and, and that thing. Yeah. And, and, and we need to pay attention to that. And uh, so I'll, I'll leave that one to that. But if you have anything that is causing your joint pains, mm -hmm. don't ignore it. Don't because ignore it. it will be sorted out mm -hmm. when it's still early. Okay. Mm. Let's go to you, Dr. E. There's a call and there's this text about the C6 and C7 in 2014. Still then, my, since then, my right wrist cannot button and my right leg is lazy. So um, yeah, I'll start with the first one. I think, like we said, um, Calcium, um, I want to choose my words carefully here, uh, which is a bit of a pain. Okay. Uh, I think calcium will not help that man mm -hmm. yeah, at all. I think, uh, actually, I think it will be quite useless for the man. Mm -hmm. It's a waste of his money. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a young man. He is uh, 36 years mm -hmm. of age. Uh, he is uh, certainly highly unlikely to be calcium deficient. Mm -hmm. He needs to see a doctor. He okay. needs to see a good doctor, and uh, he may also need to see an orthopedic surgeon. Mm -hmm. Many a times, many patients who say they have hip pain don't actually have hip pain. They have back pain. Mm -hmm. Because the patient will point to the back. They will point to the hip, and they'll say, this is where it's sore. Mm -hmm. Now, hip pain characteristically is in the groin. Okay. Yeah, it's not usually in the back. the pelvic girdle side? Uh, the pelvic girdle is, I don't want to go into too much of the anatomy, okay. but hip pain is usually in the groin. That's okay. where the patients feel it. But then there are other things, you know, you could have um, uh, bursitis, yeah, atrocanteric bursitis, mm. which is on the side. You know, uh, pain in the back can also radiate towards the hip, especially in the back. So I think just see a doctor who mm. will be able to diagnose. But the person who, who gave him uh, calcium, I don't think he's particularly useful. Okay. Uh, let me also address the issue of the C... Um, C6 and C7. C6 and C7. Yes. And who are those? Uh, so the, 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 the human skeleton, the spine itself, has got a number of, of, uh, of uh, bones. We call them the vertebrae. They are uh, seven in the, in, the, in the cervical spine, and they are 12. Oh. In the thoracic spine, mm. if you remember any of your biology, yes, I do. and there are five in the what is it called in the lumbar spine, uh -huh. and another five in the sacrum, and a little bit in the coccyx. Remember lumbar vertebrae. Yes. Uh -huh. So, so the, when he's talking about C six, C seven, he's talking about the cervical spine. Okay. Now, what I would advise is two things. Many a times, uh, we doctors overpromise sometimes in surgery. One of the things that they taught me when I was in training. And I think it is in some cultures, in some countries, like especially Western countries, they tell you to be very candid with the patient, to tell the patient, this is what we expect with regards to satisfaction. This operation has an 80% satisfaction rate. These are the complications that can arise. Mm -hmm. And I think in our setup, sometimes as doctors, we tend to overpromise mm -hmm. patients. And that sometimes gives surgery a bad name. So um, I think that even some of the operations we do, they are a stopgap measure. Yes. 
and they will help you for 10 years or 15 years, but they're the only option you have. And then after that, you may need something else done. So I've gone in a bit of a circuitous path just to tell the patient that first you need to go and see the doctor who operated on you. That's important. Mm -hmm. Because as a surgeon, I would like to know what's the outcome of my patient. You, 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 so that I was showing you a patient who say that, hey, doc, I'm doing well. Yes. Uh, so that's number one. Then, and preferably, uh, go and see a spine surgeon okay. to ask them what is, you know, why is it? Obviously, if you operate on the cervical spine, it affects the nerves that come not just from your hand, mm -hmm. but also from your legs. So I think that he should go and see the surgeon who operated on him. Okay. Sometimes patients lose, uh, patients don't like the, when they see a complication, they don't like their previous doctor. And I think that's wrong. Always go to see that doctor. And if a patient came to me and they were not happy, I would sometimes, would you like a second, second opinion? Second opinion, that's a good idea. And, and, yeah. and, and, and we doctors, I don't mind uh, sending patients it's to somebody personal. else. It's not, no, it's nothing personal. Can you pick a call right here? Sylvia Thank and Ruaraka, good evening. Hello. Okay, Sylvia. Nikona Swali. Good evening, Sylvia. Good evening to you. Yes, sure. Thank you for watching Health Check. What is your question? Okay. Okay, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Okay, nili nili jifungua kitambo wa botla. Like, oh, my left side has been paining like for more than one year, but that was after undergoing through a uh, uh, Sylvia? Hello? Okay. I think we lost her. Uh, maybe uh, my director can pick up the call and the question from whatever it is. Can I quickly just go through some of the questions and you can pick up what you can respond to? Because we have 20 minutes already. The show is already coming to an end. I feel like we haven't juiced oh the whole yeah. conversation. I know. So one is asking here, what causes numbness of fingers and toes? Another question here, I've had lower back since last year. The pain comes and goes. And when waking up, I bend or, or when I bend and stand up for long, it behaves as if I am tired. Another one asks, kindly advice on calcareous pain. Did I say the word correctly? Calcareous. Maybe cancerous. C-A-L-C-A-R-E-O-U-S. Calcareous. Rias. Okay, I'll give you to read. <laughs> but um, someone's saying kindly advi advice on that. Another one is saying, I've experienced lower back pain for quite some time. I've gone through x-rays, but nothing has changed. What do I do? Can I just keep bringing them so that m maybe some of them are related? Oh. Yeah? Okay, mm -hmm. let's go on. Rahab says that I'm having pain in all joints on my left side, my head, my shoulder joint, my ribs, my back, my knee all the way to the foot those are just some of the questions that are, are coming in here we have a call let's pick the call and just i think some of these are related do you do, do you think so yes. okay that's fine hello good evening thank you for calling health check good evening yes how are you what's your name uh Mucheng, calling from kisi yes sir go ahead i have a question for the doc yes there's, there's this problem in, with my knees. Every time I sit down, mm -hmm. and when I rise up, the, it, 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 it makes some sound, some noise. Mm -hmm. But it has been with me for now, close to 20 years. Though there's no pain, Is it something for cause of alarm? And uh, probably, what is the remedy, please? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for calling. Do you have enough information? What's his weight? What's your weight, Sorry, sir? What's, what's his age? What's your age? Oh, okay, we missed that. But you can text us on uh, 22232 and tell us what exactly is your age because that will uh, depend with the answer. Can we pick the questions one by one on the text line? We'll be coming back to all your calls. I mean, we have, we'll give that about another 10 minutes. So you can keep calling. That's fine. 
So you need to get information on his age? Yeah, so no, well, um, one of the things that we don't do is treat sound. Okay. I know it may sound like I'm not empathetic, but uh, not at all. Uh, patients come to you and they tell you, oh, doctor, my, my knees crack. And oh, I feel. Cracking yeah. Right oh, and uh, I feel, you know, anytime I bend my knee, you know, when when we we ask, um, um, is there any pain? Is there pain? Is okay. there any dysfunction? Mm -hmm. And and the reason we don't treat sound is, if it's not broken, don't fix it. You know, that is the there is an adage in medical school that mm -hmm. they tell us that. Um, Above all, do no harm. Mm -hmm. If the patient is not in pain, um, there is no need for me to do anything okay. for the patient. I cannot make his life much better. Okay. Dr. any of the questions I read on text that you'd like to respond to? I mean, there were a couple. But yes. this is the word I'm trying to figure out. Calcereous pain. Okay, yes. I, I don't think that what exists in medicine, maybe the patient... <laughs> okay. <laughs> maybe calcaneal spa or Oh, something. calcaneal spa. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's, what, that's they what they mean. That's what they mean. Okay, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and respond to those that... I, I think the, the, the one of the things that I'll talk about is numbness of, numbness. The, of the fingers and uh -huh. toes. Uh -huh. uh, as uh, my colleague has pointed, one of the commonest causes of numbness of the fingers is actually carpal tunnel syndrome that was talked about. Mm -hmm. But however, numbness uh, on its own can may not be just a medical, uh, I mean, rheumatology or orthopedics, mm -hmm. because numbness means that there's something disturbing the nerves. And, and these can either be mechanical, like uh, uh, carpal tunnel syndrome, or mm -hmm. any, even back pain can cause numbness going to the legs up to the toes, uh, or the, like the person who had su surgery on the su cervical spine. But problems of the nerves are, is a, a whole thing. It could be related to vitamin deficiency. Yes. Can be so. So it's something that requires to be evaluated, mm -hmm. uh, and that evaluation can find that it's a mechanical, uh, which can be released by surgery. It can be vitamin B six or B twelve deficiency, mm -hmm. which can be picked either from the blood or from another test we call nerve conduction study. Mm -hmm. So all these things require that the person sees a doctor and he has proper evaluation. And you know, if for example you take you take alcohol in large amounts and you don't eat enough, you don't take enough vitamin B12, you're gonna have a problem with the now with, with with the nerves, and and, and these are things that are, are, are there it can cause numbness, mm. low back pain. We had said that it's, it's uh, has got many problems. She says your the person says I have low back pain. I've done tests and so it also depends on which test you are done because mm -hmm. no low back pain can be mechanical. And if you do an X-ray, the yield is different from if you do a CT scan or when you do an MRI. Okay. The best evaluation for a back pain after you have done the assessment mm -hmm. and you examine the patient and determine some direction of thought is, is if it is a muscular, if the spine, is to do an MRI. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, if it's a woman, it can be from the pelvis, from the ovary, from the from the uterus. Okay. Or, yeah. So they need to be evaluated uh, 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 properly. Okay. But having said that, yes. there's somebody you talked about pain everywhere. There's a condition that we call fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is a condition that presents it's a, cro a generalized chronic pain disorder where you feel pain everywhere. And the pain has really no pattern. The person has back pain, pain on the left side, uh, and so forth, uh, numbness, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not able to sleep. Yes. But when you do tests, you, you really don't find uh, any positive tests. But the, the, the problem is there's an altered hom homeostasis of the, the altered balance of the hormone so that the person has got a, a low threshold for pain. So what another person does not feel as pain, this person feel, uh, feels it is pain because they have got an increase in what you call substance P. And there's some altered chemicals in the brain that modulate pain. And this condition is called fibromyalgia. And it's also one of the things that require to be evaluated by rheumatologists so that you are, it is characterized and you're given the right form of medication. Again, you need to go to the doctor. Can you pick Jessica's call? We do still need to answer the questions on the text line. So we're going to be closing the call line. Let me pick Jessica. Jessica, yes. in Nakuru, Hello. good evening. Yes, I'm very fine. Thank you for calling in today. What's yes. your question? Uh, my question is, I had uh, one, me last week, uh, 
I went and I've been having a problem with my toe. Yes. It has been having some swelling. Yes. And uh, I, I, I took it to the hospital and I was done a scan. Uh-huh. I was told I have sharp calcaneal spur with a proprioceps. And I was told that unless I be done an operation on me, I wanted now the doctor to tell me, is this a must I be done the operation? Sorry, where, because you said you had a problem in your toe or your foot? or your, uh, My foot, my foot, my foot itself. Oh, good. But Excellent. at the fingers. Uh, uh, so at the toes, uh, so yes. the toes, you know, the foot is, yes. the foot extends from uh -huh. the ankle joint to the toes. So it is yes. a problem at the toes. And what did the doctor diagnose? Calcaneal spa. A sharp calcaneal spa. So that has got nothing to do with a problem in the toes. The calcaneal, the spa in the calcaneus is really uh -huh. at the back of your heel. Your uh -huh. toes are at the, we call it the distal aspect of your foot. So they've got uh -huh. nothing to do with your toes. So, uh -huh. um, and let me ask also, which toe, which, which toe is the big toe, the, 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 sm the smaller toes? Jessica. So I will address I will, I will address this issue of uh, of calcaneal spam. Doctor, as you are addressing it, can I just throw a question to to Doctor Oyo as you're addressing this so that he can prepare? Uh, Doctor Stella from Don Home is saying I have pain in my wrist joint, elbow pain in my joint. What could be the problem? And Johnny Nakuru. At night, I'm unable to sleep, night pain on my two shoulders, and during the day, minimal pain. He is 61 uh, years old. And then someone wants the contacts. We'll be sharing the contact as we wrap up this show. And someone needs a referral for someone in your practice in Nakuru. So you could think about who to refer uh, them to in that area. Go on. Uh, so, yes, the issue of calcaneal spa. We don't treat x-rays or we don't treat... Uh, MRI scans. We treat patients, and uh, and that's important for people to know. When a patient comes to see me in my clinic, many a times they've seen other doctors, and they come and they tell me, Doctor, here is my scan, mm -hmm. and I say, No, 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 don't tell me about the scan. Let me see you first, mm -hmm. because the scan may show something. You know, anyone above the age of forty, if you scan my shoulder now, if you scan my knee, you may find something. But I'm not having shoulder or knee pain. Mm -hmm. So that's important for us to you know. We don't treat uh, x-rays we treat or MRI scans we treat there. If this patient has pain in the front of the toes, in the toes, and the, somebody has taken an x-ray of the foot and has seen a spa, mm. the spa may help even if you take uh, my x-ray, you'll probably see a spa. The spa does not mean anything. Mm -hmm. Let me say that. Okay. There are people with plantar fasciitis, which is the name of the condition, mm -hmm. who don't have a spa. There are people with large spas without plantar fasciitis. Okay. The issue is what is wrong with the patient. Mm -hmm. then wow. Let me also add, uh, chime in on the patient with, with pain in the shoulders. Yes, please. 61-year-old, uh, pain in the shoulders, worse at night. Mm -hmm. That's a typical age of patients who has got impingement of the shoulder. Okay. You remember me talking about it, where the, the bone catches on the tendons. Yes. And that's why at night they get quite a bit of pain. Okay. In the early stages of the disease, there is not so much pain, but later you get more pain. But it could also be a sign that the tendons are actually torn. It could be a rotator cuff tear. It could also be a sign that there's arthritis of the shoulder. The arthritis of the shoulder is not very common, primary arthritis of the shoulder, mm -hmm. but it could be. So like we say, go and see a competent doctor. Okay. The person who has opened a clinic next to your home is not necessarily a doctor mm -hmm. or a competent one. Wow. <laughs> Let's go to the few questions that you can respond to, Dr. Oyota Fadali. Yeah, you yes, already talked about the shoulder pain. Yes. Um, even pain of the wrist and elbows, it depends on the pattern. Mm -hmm. It depends on, 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 on uh, whether they are both wrists, both mm -hmm. shoulders, because anything can cause a problem on, on the pain, pain of the is pain of the wrist and the shoulder. Yes, uh, and uh, there could be uh, different things. You could, you know, wrist pain, for example, can be because of rheumatoid arthritis, gout, uh, carpal tunnel syndrome, mm -hmm. or, or, or uh, and the same uh, the shoulder. You can have uh, there, 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 
commonly you get pain on the lateral lateral aspect here or medial aspect we call it epicondylitis or even here on the tip here of the of the shoulder and all that depends on your habits how you how you you work and so forth mm -hmm. uh, but also inflammatory arthritis can affect those shoulders okay. what we are saying is that if you have pain go and see a doctor for evaluation okay. because there are over a hundred reasons why you can why have you could joint. be having yes Dr. Mm. does vitamin B12 deficiency cause hand numbness? It can cause numbness and even paralysis. Wow. Yes. Okay. Depending on the severity. Okay. Mm. How do you know that you have TB spine and how can you differentiate it with arthritis of the back? Yes, we have a method. You know, the, all of them come. When you're evaluating back pain, I said that 90% of them are mechanical. Yes. And, 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 and 10% can be because of a, another reason. With the TB, infections like TB mm -hmm. being one of them. And, and the pattern, when we do an X-ray or imaging, or even when you examine, the, 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 the looks are, 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 are different. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as uh, of course, the treatment is also different. Mm -hmm. Yes. We have a doctor here, Fatma from Rongai. She's telling me to tell the caller, Dr. Och uh, Mr. Ocheng from Kisi, to take lots of water. Do we agree? All for the opinion say I. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've heard you mention health and, you know, just what you take into your body as a huge part. And you've been tuned into the show all this time. Every single doctor that comes in here will emphasize that whatever you do as your practice, whatever you put in your mouth, you are what you eat. Mm. Yes. That's why it'd be nice. I'll see you going to comment. <laughs> no, I'm trying to be as, as nice as I can. But can I tell you this? Uh -huh. I think it's important that we, we never be dismissive of patient symptoms. Yes. It happens even to us doctors. Yes. Sometimes we are pressed with time. You know, we are pressed with time. You know, we've had busy days. You're moving from one patient to an operation. You're moving from one operation to review a patient. And you're pressed with time. I had a patient who had a problem with the foot, a specific problem. We called it a charcoal foot because mm -hmm. the patient was diabetic, so the foot was deformed. And I was pressed with time. And I went and I saw him. I said, I think your problem with your foot is this. This patient had been to many big hospitals. And uh, I must be honest, I must confess that I quickly say, I, I don't know what the problem is, blah, blah, blah. And the patient said, you know, I saw you on TV, and I wondered if what you were talking about, the patient that operated on TV, had the same problem as me. Mm -hmm. And I said, let's do an X-ray. Mm -hmm. And when I did the X-ray, my jaw dropped. Oh, wow. And I said, wow, it is that problem mm -hmm. that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. And this had been missed by many doctors. Okay. And when I asked, has anybody ever touched your foot? And she said, no one has ever touched my foot. So we, uh, it's, we have to live a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But by the time a patient is coming to you having suffered for a year, at least what you owe them is, is a listening ear. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I have been having pain in my upper right shoulder. What might be the cause? You know, the, the issues of the shoulders have been well articulated here. Very well. But sometimes you can have a problem in the neck. Yes. Okay. In the neck, which can cause headache, back, back headache. But also, you have a problem in the neck, but primarily what you feel is pain on the shoulder. Okay. Yeah, so uh, again, that's why we say go and see a doctor. And that's why when you, you see, when you see a doctor, sometimes when a patient comes, like if a patient comes with a shoulder problem, one of the things that I quickly do is I do a screening exam of the neck. So I said, move your neck this way, move your neck that way, move your neck this way. No. And then I do, I examine the shoulder. But you know, I'm not going to give a patient a lecture and say, by the way, you know, I was doing your neck just to see if your neck is fine. <laughs> and I'm doing this, no, you understand? Yeah. <laughs> so you, you, you simply cannot become a doctor even by what you just told us. You need to see the doctor. Okay, absolutely. We have to wrap it up. I'm sure there are so many calls. I might be in trouble for not being able to fit each and every one. But just in your wrap up, what would you tell those that are watching right now? And yeah, what advice would you give to someone about how they can take care of a health 
matters joint is it connect this tissue connective tissue yeah yeah musculoskeletal uh, problems are very important uh -huh. they are the leading cause of pain in the world mm -hmm. the leading cause of absenteeism from work mm -hmm. and the leading cause of early retirement and recognizing this the who declared the born and built decade 2010 to 2020 mm -hmm. and the in a, the reason is to raise awareness on this condition and promote cost effective treatment and management of these conditions and promote research so that if for example you are uh, suggesting that water can uh, can deal with joint pain you need to do a research in an uh, orderly manner and provide that evidence mm -hmm. but if you have pain in the joint go and see a doctor and treat it properly and articulate it properly. I see. Yes. Well, yes. to avoid that early retirement, I say, call a doctor, you okay? Take care of your musculoskeletal. Yes, sir. Yes. Was that called? Musculoskeletal. Musculoskeletal. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. What I would say is, uh, I would echo the words of my patient when I asked her, why didn't you come? Kwa nini ukurudi? Mm -hmm. And the patient told me, I listened to somebody else, obviously it didn't help. I'm back, why don't you help me? <laughs> so uh, I, that was good. Uh, and I would just say, Madaktari wakuwendi. Not every, you know, in every, I usually joke, every family has got a pediatrician. Mm -hmm. There are about, every family has a gynecologist. You know, so if you have pain, we're not saying that you, you walk here, you feel your knee is painful, and you rush to the doctor. Mm -hmm. We can't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, if your pain has lasted two minutes, uh, no, it lasted three seconds, we can't do that. But if you have pain that's nagging, go and see a proper doctor. Don't mm -hmm. go to the don't go to the chemist mm -hmm. and ask for Panadol. Go and see a doctor, mm -hmm. somebody who is well trained to sort out the problem. None of us would get into a plane of somebody who says, you know, all these. All these planes are now computerized, and I just read, I watched on YouTube how to fly the plane. Mm -hmm. No, you would get into a plane of somebody who's got a number of flying hours. And a it's number of guys. Yes, <laughs> it's the same thing. Go and see somebody who has taken time to train for the profession. And that's what we do here. We bring all those that have trained specifically for the profession just for the questions that have been asked. Could you refer someone in Nakuru? Any of your wow, they, they, they are uh, a number of uh, orthopedic surgeons that I know in Nakuru. Wow. I'm sure that you can find out. I don't have any specific person that Google I have. Google orthopedic surgeon or rheumatologist in Nakuru. No, th there's no rheumatologist in Nakuru. No. Uh, Mombasa, uh, Kisumu, okay. Eldoret, but the rest are in Nairobi. Okay. So, but a, a physician, a, a, a consultant physician mm -hmm. should be able to you have an idea okay. of what you're dealing with okay. uh, because they are reasonably well trained in rheumatology That's and, and next appropriate referral. Okay. Yes. yes. And to visit both of them, you can visit Project Towers just there um, close to what, what was the landmark? Nairobi Club. Yeah, so opposite. that's Fifth Avenue around. Fifth, it's just on Hospital Road yes. opposite, opposite Nairobi Club, next to Kenyatta Hospital. Good mm. stuff. I've missed seeing you at Nairobi Club. <laughs> anyway, it's time for us to say Kwaheri. Thank you so much for watching. I mean, we could just go through that. We encourage you to share this video with everyone on your Facebook so they can get more information on musculoskeletal issues right here on Hope TV, where you look and live at exactly 9 in the p.m. We have news watch for you, so stand by for that. I'll see you tomorrow morning on Activate on Hope FM, where you listen and live. Till then, God bless you and keep you. May it cause his face to shine upon you and be good to you. Kwaheri, I thank you. Thank you.